okay to do a registration for pages in xmap server this is the first thing you're going to do you're going to go into download xampp and go into download it should work with linux windows whichever one you have or ios mac system so i'm going to download the windows one so once you download it i've already downloaded it so once you download it open up the app um, the x x a m p p so you're going to open this up and you should see this you should see this as the control panel for the server so it's going to be a local host server you're going to press on start apache and start mysql because we're going to be using mysql related database now once you've done this that's to make sure it's working go on to um the internet browser and just type in localhost uh, if you get this that means it's, it's been installed correctly and you've got a localhost server running now what, what we're going to do is um, open up php my admin so all you do is localhost and type in php my admin at the top on the browser and we should get our php my admin page so the same way we've done it in denwa um, i'm doing it with xamp now so the first thing i'm going to do like last time i'm just going to create a database so um i'm going to create the data you're going to call it your project so i'm just going to call it project um, i'm just going to call it project for now you're going to call it your name of the project and press create so now you can see project has been created on the left. The next thing you're going to do is um, go into the project. So it's in project and you're going to create a database. Again, you could create it using um, the structure they have there. So you could name it and say how many columns. But as you know, I prefer doing it in SQL. So once you're in SQL, I'm just going to Put it in so what i'm doing is saying create a table called users um, then i'm saying the id should be integer 11 and it should never be null so there should be nothing there and it should be automatically incremented and it should be a primary key then i'm saying username varchar 100 characters again can't leave it blank email varchar 100 characters don't leave it blank password varchar 100 characters don't leave it blank and then closing the um, database. And I'm, all I'm saying is the default in, in this. Now, if I press go, inside the project, I have a table that's been created for users. So that's going to be my youth. At the moment, you can see there's no data inside there because now we're going to start putting data inside there. Once you have created um, a user's database, go on to your C drive. And you should see a folder called XAMPP, X -A -M -P -P. go inside there, go inside um, something called HDoc. So let me look for where it is, where's my one? Here you go, HDocs, go inside there. And I'm just going to create a new folder. So um, I'm just going to call it project actually. So you could call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it project. And I'm going to go inside the project. And inside there now we're going to start doing our coding. Okay, I'm going to do the coding, then I'm going to show you I'm going to, um, what I did. Okay, the first thing I did was created a register.php file. Um, as you know, I like working in Visual Studio because it turns them in different colors. Let me just quickly go through the um, register file. It's saying include the server PHP. The server PHP file will link um, the local host I mean, the XM to the my, PHP my admin database. We will go through per server PHP later. And the rest of it is just normal HTML code where I have four input groups. So I've got username, email, password, and confirm password, and a button. That's all I have. And important part with them is having this, the form. So you post it and post the registration post PHP and a little bit of PHP codes identifying the username. 
So I've got a name user and I use the PHP code to identify it as a dollar username. And you do the same thing for the others. So email, password, I left it blank. Confirm password, I left it blank. And that's a submit button. And once um, you press the button, it will go to server PHP and check if the values, um, if the database exists. And if it does exist, whatever information you put inside those fields should be added um, to the database. Now let's look at server PHP quickly. Server PHP again starts, initialize everything from zero. Then it says connect. I've changed the, so I've called it project now. So my database name is project. So this is the database connection. It connects to local host root project. Then it's saying if the user is registered, get all the information. So username, post the information there, email posted there, email posted there. And this is checking for validation. This is the checks if the user have entered every fields. Because the number we said is can't be null value when we created the database, we have to make sure the user don't leave anything blank, otherwise it's going to send an error. And we also have to make sure password one matches password two. If it doesn't match it, it should send an error. So this sign means it doesn't match it, and the password two doesn't match. So here, what, what all he's doing is getting the information from um, registration PHP file, the username here, and he's posting it inside the database where the name is username, where the field is username. That's all he's doing. So then this is the username. So select, this is the table where username, so sorry, this is gonna be the part of the login. So I'm gonna show you, explain the login page later. So this is basically that's adding information. So let's try, um, sorry, let me just quickly go through another one, the error PHP, that's important as well. This is checking, making sure there is no error in the PHP. Okay. Um, in when it's connecting to the database, it's making sure there is no error with the coding or error with any connection. So only three things we need: register page, server page. Server page connects to the database and connects, adds information to the data and error error page. So those are the three things we need. And I'm going to go through login page later on. So I'm, we're going to quickly test it to make sure registration page works. Okay, to test it, we open up. Um, our browser, I go into localhost, then remember I created a folder called project, so I have to call it project, and then I'm gonna call it register.php. I've actually designed this using, um, using CSS. So let me just quickly show you my CSS as well at the same time. So if I open style CSS, this is the CSS file, I've designed it using CSS. So if I go to my register here and I'm saying, if I go back up, um, link that CSS file so you could design it. So this is my database. Now I'm going to add some information. So I'm going to write Mahmoud email, say my email, put password as one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Register. That username already exists. So I need to re use a different one. So I'm going to call it um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So Mahmoud one. E email already exists. So that's another issue. So I have to make sure I use a different email. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Register now. So here we go, it's, it's done it, it's logged me in. Now what I could do is, if I just show you, go back to the code and explain the rest of the code. Now I'm gonna explain the login page. Login page is just the same thing. All I have to make sure is the error page is included, username, password, and if it, that's, that's it, and it's links to start server again. And it says include the server page. So I'm going to go back to the server page and explain how the login works. So now for the login, all it does is um, let's go to the login section. Checks if the password matches um, the information on the user um, inside the database. So if I leave it blank, it should say password and username required. So then it's going to go and check like the way it did 
and make sure there is no matching. If it, I mean, make sure if it's matches. If it matches, then you log you in. If it doesn't match, then it's going to say wrong, wrong username and password. Try again. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you how it's working. So if you, if if we go to our registry um, PHP admin, if I go back into project, if I go into users, you could see my information has been added. So Mahmoud one, my email address. And, and the password I gave, don't worry about this, the password I gave is one, two, three, four. This is automatic. So do not touch this. Do not let anyone change the password here. Now, I've created a login page as I showed you. What I'm going to do is open up that login page. Um, so I'm going to go into login.php. Oops, sorry, I got it wrong. Localhost-project dash login dot php okay so this is my login page now my first username was mahmoud1 and my password was 1234 if i click login here you go you are logged in so now this is my home page this is where you should be starting this is the index page this is this is where you should be your uh, once they log in they should access your home page with all the information you need what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to give you guys all those codes. The codes I have is the only codes I had was the server code, register code, login, and index page is your home page. So let me just show it there. So your index page is just your home page, and all it's doing is getting the information from the login page and keeping it there. That's it. And those are again is the saying check if it matches if it matches the success and then you could start designing your home page so you could say here welcome to my project page so if i save this quickly if i go back to my refresh it there you go welcome to my project page so it's it's up to you how you design start designing the home page. Ideally, it should be inside there. I I done it outside the body, so it should have been inside the. Um, it should be that's in the wrong place actually. So it should not be there. It should be. Where did it say the home page. It should be inside here. The content. This is where the content is. So I could put it there. Save it again. Go back. Refresh it. Oh, sorry, this is too messed up. Okay, this is something I have to fix with CSS. But basically, this is how you are going to create a database. Or install XMAP. Um, then check if your local host works. If it, um, Once you install XMAP, make sure you start the Apache server and the MySQL server. Once you start it, go to localhost. So let me just quickly show you. Localhost. Make sure this page comes up. If this page comes up, this is saying your local server has been installed properly. And then go into C drive, XMAP, HTDoc, HTDoc, and inside there you have to install, uh, save everything. So remember I call it a project, and inside the project I've got all those files. So I'm gonna give you guys all those files so you could look at it and use it. Thank you very much and good coding.